After releasing my recent version of Schubert's Erlkönig, of which I am aware it is the slowest version available on this planet, many of you went into deep debates on how fast a horse would run through the night carrying a father with his boy in his arms. In this video I'll do the reverse of what typically should be done when looking for the tempo intentions of a composer. We'll start with some text analysis and end with taking a look on the notation Schubert used. I also will answer the questions why in 2015 I had a different approach in the recording of the very same transcription by August Horn on my clavichord. One of the recurring comments of viewers who considered this performance to be too slow or even way too slow was the lack of horse speed and an overall lack of fear as well. Now, to be completely honest here, when I looked at Schubert's metronome number of 152 for the very first time, not so very long ago in fact, my initial reaction corresponded at least partly with what these viewers experienced. Nobody will claim that the 1815 horse in my performance is running at its fastest. Not that I am an expert on horses, on the contrary. The only thing I know about horses is what I hear from Evelyn's teacher when she's having lessons. So there I learned way more basic than, for instance, Renshin 1957 wrote in the comments, that one has a slow, moderate and fast gallop. I would be the last person to claim the triplets in my performance equal a fast gallop perhaps even not a moderate version. But back to our text now. I thought, where in the text do I read about the speed of the horse? About the fact the horse gallops? And more especially, in which kind of gallop the horse is riding? Actually, nowhere, except at the very end. When the father finally accepts the fear of the boy to be real, the narrator says the following. The father shudders. He writes swiftly. In the original version it says, er reitet geschwind. Probably not by accident. Schubert adds accelerando exactly there. And that accelerando, quite modern for those days by the way, must be sustained until the recitativo. We'll come back to this accelerando since at the single beat version of 152, there is little, if still any room, for an ongoing accelerando that being the nature of accelerando over such a long period, must not only push the barriers of the tempo chosen, but go beyond that into another faster one. So, the minimum we can say is that the father writes at that specific moment swiftly. Strictly spoken, this does not have to mean the horse wasn't already running swiftly from the beginning, but the interpretation that the father urges his horse to go faster from this moment on, when he finally accepts his son is in really great danger instead of trying to comfort him, makes sense as well. And perhaps even more sense, since why would Goethe mention this speed indication only now, if the father was already driving at that speed all along? It is the latter interpretation that seems to be the one Schubert had as well, seeing the accelerando he added. He increased the tempo of the music as an interpretation of the increase of horse speed. But overall, what is the implication on our tempo question? It is hardly relevant, I would say. So, one could state as well that at single beat 152, the horse is not running even swiftly, it's being driven to its absolute maximum, if a horse indeed can run at 152 metronome speed. Listen for instance to this recording, almost spot on single beat 152. The text gives some 
other clues, as some of you have noticed as well. Unlike this wonderful animated version we just watched, the father was carrying his son in his arms. We can assume Schubert noticed this as well. Well, driving a horse with a child in your arms is a quite different situation than driving a horse to its maximum speed with both hands firmly on the reins. And not only that, the man is driving through the night and assumingly not in town. If it were in town, his speed would be not the fastest gallop anyway. But riding a horse in the middle of the night in the 1815 rural surroundings with no street light in assumedly bad weather, at least with wind, carrying a sick child in a speed that would resemble that of single beat 152, and remember that's faster than the galloping videos you've posted, would quite literally be an act of committing suicide. And moreover, and perhaps most importantly, father and son are having a conversation which as well points to a horse speed that is not on par with Zorro driving Tornado while escaping Sergeant Garcia's troops. Note also that from the moment where Goethe writes Geschwind swiftly and Schubert adds Accelerando, father and son are no longer speaking, it's just the narrator who talks. Also that element points to a much slower initial tempo, I think, than the single beat version of 152. So to close this segment on the Erlkönig, a few words on the metronome numbers and notation. 152 quarter note, which is Schubert's own tempo indication, implies 7.6 repeated notes per second. That literally would be impossible at the Frenzel, where in the best circumstances, not in the case of octave playing even, one can reach for a short while 6 to maximum 7 repeated notes a second. Again. For very short passages, 7 is the absolute maximum. Even on this Fritz that has a brand new state-of-the-art regulated action, it, I came to 7.4 notes a second. Also for very short while and not with fingerings like 4, 3, 2, 1 as suggested by Czerny and in fact all other pianists of that time would use for repeated notes. So the answer on whether 100 to 152 quarter note is possible on a Viennese pianoforte is no. One needs Steinway's repetition action. That of Erhard, who's standing over there, is not enough to reach the speed of 152. And you can see this for yourself in the famous rendition of Dietrich Fischer Disco. Note how the pianist does not allow the keys to come up fully, but keeps them depressed at a few millimeters. This would result in zero sound on the Viennese action. And the 152 of Schubert is not the only tempo indication for this piece. His contemporary Karl Czerny wrote some fantasies on his songs and gave his own metronome marks for them, among which the Erlkönig. Czerny for whatever reason, gives half note 88, about 14% faster than Schubert. That tempo results in 8.8 .8 repeated notes per second, which on the Viennese pianos of that time is simply out of question. As it would be pushing the barriers, if not be impossible, on the best regulated Steinways of today as well. If 88 would be also Czerny's tempo for the original Erlkönig version, which is possible, why would he not stick to 152 here? One wonders how even an impression of an accelerando could be given at the end. But that accelerando is even out of the question 152 single beat. Listen again to Dietrich Fischer Disco, who is singing this song in single beat 152. The pianist tries everything he can to speed up, 
but is barely reaching 160 for one moment after which they decide to make a giant with Redondo. Be aware that the Redondo is added by Disco. It is not indicated by Schubert. So and finally the notation. The tempo ordinario for common time in this case, no 16th notes, rather open harmonic structure would be somewhat faster than 60 for the quarter note. Schubert indicates schnell. It is not always easy to convert these German terms to what they would have been in case of Italian tempo words, but here it's rather obvious that by schnell Schubert means allegro. So in 152 in whole beat, meaning 76 in single beat, is an allegro tempo for sure. But the half note 88 given by Czerny, so in single beat 80, 80 to the quarter note makes sense as well. It's up to you to decide which of both directions you take. The 152 is definitely Schubert's. We will never know if 88 was also a tempo he could have lived with. But I believe that it is made clear in this segment that both numbers are hard, if not impossible to explain from the single beat practice. Which is partly proven by your servant when uploading a much faster version in 2015 on my clavichord, not thinking too much on the consistently implemented tempo research yet. You all know the early 2017 story of the Mozart Munich sonatas and how Lorenz Guardian tapped into my sudden understanding he might be right after all. So this was recorded in my pre lorenz days, so to say, but even that recording with which I wanted to demonstrate partly the clavichord as a mature instrument only reaches 112. So unlike some of you have written, that's a very far distance from Schubert's 152. Let me end by inviting you to listen again to the Erlkönig with all this in mind. You'll find the video over here. And there is a video underneath that introduces you to our tempo research here at Atlantic Sound. And if you want to see more of these videos, think about joining our awesome community at patreon.com. Link below and in the description box. Thank you so much for being here with me on this fascinating journey and see you soon again. Bye.